What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Mental Health, the New Wealth. I am your girl, the one and only Nikita Nicole, the Illuminist, and I am so glad that you have joined us on another episode. On February 14th around the world, the pagan holiday of St. Valentine's is celebrated. So due to this fact, and that St. Valentine's Day is coming up very soon, I wanted to talk about nothing other than love. What is love to you? I know to me, I know when I definitely feel it. And when it's real, it's undeniable. So in this episode today, we're going to talk about the different forms of love and how they show up in our everyday lives, what these different forms are ruled by, And last but not least, you know your girl is going to give you some nuggets to make sure that your love is on octillion. Look it up. Love is not something that you show only one time a year on one day, but it's something that you express 365 days, 24 hours in the day. So we definitely going to get it in. So sit back, relax, and join this episode. Before we get into this episode, let me say that I am not a licensed mental health professional nor doctor, although I will host licensed professionals as guests from time to time. The mental health difficulties discussed on this podcast will come from extensive research, life experiences of myself and others, and are not to be taken as diagnosis, prescription, or cure to any health mental difficulties or disorders. If you are experiencing deep mental health difficulties of any kind and have lasted for any duration of time, please contact your local mental health professional for assistance with treatment. If you or someone you know is suffering with mental distress or thoughts of suicide, you are not alone. Please call the toll-free National Suicide Prevention Hotline, open 24-7 at 1-800-273-273. 8255. Again, that is 1 800 273 8255. Now let's get into the episode. Webster's Dictionary defines love as an intense feeling of deep affection. Wikipedia says that love encompasses a range of strong and positive emotions and mental states. Dictionary.com states that love is a proudly tender, passionate affection for another person or a thing. What do you think? All I know is love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It is not boastful. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking or self-serving. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, and always hopes. It always perseveres. And of all of these, that is the love that I want to experience on a daily basis. And we are getting it in. Today's episode hit me hard because this is something that is near and dear to my heart. It's something that I try to operate out of and move in every day of my life. So I found extreme joy in researching these different forms of love, what they are ruled by, how it affects us on an everyday basis and things we can do to boost our love game to a whole nother level. So let's get into the different variations of love. Now, although I will be listing them, they're not in any particular order. However, you know your girl like to save the best for last. That's a little hint. So the first form of love is philia. Philia is an affectionate love, brotherly love, This love is one of family and close friends. It's displayed by sharing value and respect with one another. You normally show philia through deep conversation, being open and trustworthy, and being sensitive and understanding. Philia love is ruled by the mind. In turn, using this love, you must be mindful. The second form of love is pragma. Pragma is enduring love. It is one of mature love that develops over time. 
a love that is dedicated to commitment and thriving through. With Pragma Love, you're more committed to stand in love rather than fall in love. You are making a conscious commitment to grow together as life partners indefinitely. You normally show Pragma Love through strengthening the bond of long-lasting relationships, showing effort towards your partner, or choosing to stand in love and work through obstacles in your life to maintain the connectedness. This particular form of love is ruled by the subconscious. The third form of love is storge or storge, meaning familiar love. This is normally love between parents, close relatives, sisters, brothers, close cousins, best friends. This is an infinite love built on acceptance and deep emotional connection. This love is also built and strengthened on memories and memorable occasions. You usually show this form of love by sacrificing your time, self, or your personal pleasures. This level is ruled by the mind also. The fourth form of love is Eros. Eros is romantic love. This particular level of love is ruled by personal affection and physical pleasure. This is a primal love that comes from natural instinct, a passionate love that is displayed through physical affection, such as but not limited to hugging, kissing, holding hands, and, you know, sexual interactions. And in this love, you desire a person's physical appearance of their body. And likewise, the portion of us that rules this level of love is, in fact, body. You show this level of Eros love when admiring a person's physical appearance, physical touch, romantic affection, caressing, kissing, or anything physical. I know y'all going to be working this level of love to death on the 14th. And although this love has been seen to the most powerful level of love or the most talked about or the most sought after, this is almost the least of all of these loves, physical connection. It's very important. That is how we all got here. So I'm not hating on it all together, but we have blown this level of love out of proportion and not understanding the balance that is needed with these other levels of love to make Eros love on the level that is meant to be experienced. The fifth version of love is Ludus love, which is playful love. It's flirtatious and playful. It's fresh, it's new, it's exciting. Ludus love is what people usually experience when they first start dating. You get that giddy feeling of excitement, teasing, playing, flirting, major interest and involved in each other. That's what Ludus love is. Usually after you've been with someone for a while, the Ludus level of love wears off. If you're not diligent in making your pragma love strong, then you can go and try to find Ludus love from somewhere else. Ludus love is ruled by emotions. We normally see Ludus love when we are flirting, having carefree conversations, spending time laughing and having fun, and having exciting childlike behavior together. Y'all know that Ludus love, you know, when it be real nice and shiny, it's real new, new. He ain't never took down your hair and you ain't never washed his clothes and had to share a bathroom with him. You know, it be real, real new. That's that Ludus love. When y'all talk to each other, your cheeks is hurting and you can't stop laughing and giggling. Yeah, that's that, that's that Ludus love. And although it is amazing, it's important to do the work of these other loves so that you can keep the Ludus love throughout your relationship for its whole span. Ludus love is ruled by your emotions. Another level of love is mania. Mania is obsessive, possessive love. You know, that fatal attraction type love. This love is ruled by obsessive or madness over your love interest, leading to unwanted jealousy, possessiveness, and codependence. This level of love is shown when there is an imbalance in the Eros and Ludus love, which causes mania love. We're not even going to speak about what you do on this level of love. We're going to speak about what to do to avoid experiencing and dealing with this level of love. So these are to recognize behaviors before acting. So if you are the one getting a little crazy and a little jealous, check yourself. Step back and look at what you're doing. Don't just feed into that. 
And then also, if you're on the other end, pay attention to people's behavior and how they act regarding you in certain things. You want to focus on you and loving yourself. So if you are in love with yourself, you love who you are in general, you are less apt to go crazy over someone else because you don't idolize them. They're only an addition to who you are. You can definitely love someone, but you don't have to love them to death. Another solution would be to have trust in your relationships. It's very important to have trust so that way you won't let your mind run wild. The element that rules this level of love is your emotions. Another level of love is fellatia. Now, I love this level of love. This level of love is based on self-love and self-care, self-worth. In this love, you have a healthy level of self-love and compassion towards yourself. You have respect and acceptance and appreciation. Your soul allows you to reflect on your needs for personal, emotion, and mental health. This particular level of love is ruled by the soul. You can emphasize this level of love by creating an environment that empowers you in your well-being. Take care of yourself and invest in yourself. Spend time with people that support you and embrace and also love who you are. And thoroughly learn your likes and dislikes, who you are, your outward version and that inward shadow version. You are only able to truly love yourself or fully exemplify this level of love when you have understood who you are, the good and the bad. And last but not least, my favorite form of love. You remember back in the day you used to play double dutch or, you know, y'all used to play tag or whatever and you used to call out zero no higher. This is the zero no higher form of love. And this love is agape. Agape is something that I love to be shown through the divine on a daily basis. Every day I open my eyes and breathe new breath. It's agape. Every time I walk and go to use my limbs and they function accordingly, it's agape. Every time that I want to go somewhere and able to hop in my car and get to my destination safely and return is agape. Every time I'm hungry and I go in the refrigerator to get something, agape. Every time that something happens in my life that affects me and I'm able to learn a lesson and to move forward with, it's agape. I love this level of love so much that I got it tatted so you know it's real. Agape is ruled by the spirit and it is selfless love, unconditional love, God love. Agape is defined as an empathetic attitude of love for everyone and everything, an expression of unconditional love, a conscious decision to spread love, y'all, a conscious decision. No matter what happens to you, what goes down, it's a conscious decision that you make with yourself as to how you will love in this world and how you will show love and move forward. Examples of this form of love are MLK through the marches. Now that was on some different, you know, he was trying to get something done in the civil rights movement and it was very, very powerful. But his thing was nonviolence, which was a part of love, unconditional love and being nonviolent. I don't feel like if you would, you know, shoot me with a water hose or spit on me or do some crazy stuff like that, that I would not put my hands on you in return. I just, I I just ain't built like that. You know, you know, the divine is still working on me on that. I I don't think I'd be able to do that, but that was something that was an example of what agape love is. It's the ultimate form of being able to turn 10,000 cheeks. So although I strive to embody this on a daily basis, I don't feel like I would be up to the level of MLK and some of these people who get terrible things done to them and they don't have any reaction at all because they are so focused on the goal and so focused on sharing love. And considering, like I said, that agape love is ruled by the spirit, what are some ways that you can show and exemplify better levels of agape love. You can dedicate yourself to improving the lives of others, making sure your actions are good and of well intent and to be kind and mindful. Do random acts of love and kindness without recognition. 
always try your best to exert compassion and grace. And that's something that we all can embody right there because it's very important to express passion and grace to another person. So you must always express compassion and grace with yourself. Love yourself, be compassionate. If you are first able to do that with yourself, then more than likely you're able to do it with other people. I am in love with agape love. To me, although this was not in my research, I feel that all these different levels of love is encompassed in agape love, except for mania. All of these levels of love accompany what agape love is and so much more. To make sure that we represent agape, which is the highest form of love there is, we have to make sure that we are in tune. That being so, we have to make sure that we are aligned in every way possible. And one of those main ways that we need to make sure that we are aligned is spiritually. Our heart was given to us not only to function and move the blood around our body, our heart was given to us as a form that we are able to relate agape love one to another. So to do that, we have to make sure that our spiritual systems, our spiritual centers are aligned, form of chakras. Love is an air element ruled by the heart chakra, which is the fourth chakra and the system of seven. There are more than seven chakras. However, we most commonly talk about seven. The color of the heart chakra is green and is called anahata. The green exemplifies growth, renewal, success, abundance, love, self-love, governs relationships, and hope. It also is based on compassion, forgiveness, letting go, harmony, transition, and contentment. When your heart chakra is out of balance, you tend to go through depression and have difficulties relating with others. You can also have issues with asthma, lung disease, breast cancer, pneumonia, shoulder problems, as well as issues with confidence and inspiration. And I want to talk about that. That is very important because we have time in our lives to address the issues that we have. However, when you don't address things and you don't make a practice to heal and open different parts of yourself that has calloused and dissect and break down some of those things and you just hold negative energy in your body on a regular basis and never do the work to actually clean out, then your body actually turns that energy into physical ailments. And so it's kind of crazy because when I look at people that are very angry, when I look at people that hold grudges, when I look at people that have different um, ailments and issues in life, they're more oftentimes very unbalanced in one way or another. They're very stern on their opinion, uh, not flexible, not loving, not forgiving, not kind. They usually are very stern for whatever reason. And I think because of this, because of not doing the work, then you develop not only mental difficulties and disorders, you develop ailments and disease due to not making sure that you are in alignment. Because as it says here, your heart chakra is directly related to your thalamus. This is the organ that controls your heart. The heart chakra is also related to blood circulation, immune system, lower lungs, rib cage, breast, skin, upper back, and your hands. So just imagine if you are having a hard time to forgive, then you might manifest these illnesses that you are not able to forgive in your immune system, making it easy for you to get sick. You might develop breast cancer from products or different things and different emotions that you're not able to let go and release. You may develop shoulder and upper back pain due to some bondages that you are not able to move past so far as your heart chakra being congested. Because you cannot forgive someone, because you wanted to hold grudges, because you were resentful, now you have these physical ailments in your body that are directly related to your heart chakra being blocked. 
So it's very important that you stay in tune and stay tapped in and keep your heart chakra and all of your chakras clear, but especially your heart chakra. So more than likely, if you are having an issue with forgiving or letting go, if you continue to not be in uh, harmony situations, if you have an issue with transition and transformation and you are not content, then more than likely there is something that you need to do to exercise your heart chakra and get it clear on a regular basis. And this is not something that you do just one day and don't do again for a long time. This is something that you have to practice on a regular basis to make sure that your heart chakra is clear so that you are able to use all these forms of love, except for the mania, leave that mania alone, but use all these forms of love that we talked about to make sure that you embody love on every level, especially on the main level of agape. This episode of Mental Health, The New Wealth Podcast was sponsored by Jabez Enterprise Group and Best Publishing. Jabez Enterprise Group is the hub to help you manifest, inspire, and support your business dreams, visions, and goals. Also, as an activist and philanthropist in the small business community, Best Publishing has developed two self-help books, Get the Cheese, Avoid the Traps, A Guide on Government Contracting, and Speaking in Colors a guide on effective communication, diversity, and inclusion. Go on over to jabezenterprisegroup.com to be assisted in manifesting, inspiring, and supporting your business dreams and goals, or to purchase Get the Cheese, Avoid the Traps, or Speaking in Colors. That is J-A-B-E-Z enterprisegroup.com. So I wanted to talk about these different levels of love because it's very important to know where your heart center is, which is your heart chakra. It's very important to know what areas of your life and your body that this affects. Most oftentimes, if you are experiencing difficulty in this area, physically or emotionally or in your life, it is indication that you need to exercise your heart chakra as above, so below. So everything happens on the spiritual level first before it happens in the physical level. Once it's in the physical, you have been experiencing for quite some time some issues or some blockages in the spiritual before it hits the physical. So I wanted to talk about this topic because people wait until February 14th to show love to people, which is so insane to me. I don't want love just on one day. I need love, loyalty, agape, all throughout the year, every day, 24-7. If not, I'm not able to get that and I have to be reduced to sharing that on one day, I don't want it. And especially for your boy St. Valentine, I'm going to do a bonus episode for y'all on that so y'all can really know what's up and what y'all celebrating. Y'all just making these companies money because you've been slacking all year. But I can't blame you because you must do that thing with yourself first before you do it with someone else. So if you do not love yourself wholeheartedly, I can't expect you to love me or anybody else all the way. Let's get into some things we can do to clear that heart chakra. Something that I do on a regular basis is I do chants or mantras. It's a part of my meditation, right? So just as the heart has a certain chakra That certain chakra has a sound. It has a mudra, which is a hand gesture. And it also has some gemstones that you are able to utilize to boost and clear out your heart chakra centers. So what you're going to do is in a nice, quiet place, you're going to sit Indian style, right? And that's so crazy. Who the hell made up Indian style? That is so not... (laughs) People is crazy. We're not going to say Indian style. You're going to sit crisscross applesauce, okay? Y'all know what that is. Y'all remember when the teacher said, sit crisscross applesauce and raise your hand to make sure that you're paying attention. You're going to sit like that, right? Then with your right hand, you're going to hold up the okay sign. So you know how your pointer finger is touching your thumb and then the other three fingers are sticking straight up. You're going to turn that upside down and you're going to place that hand over your heart. 
With your left hand, you're going to make this same hand gesture, which is called a mudra, but you're going to put that particular hand and rest it on your knee. So in meditating and doing mantras, which is the sound of the meditation. So because we're doing heart chakra, because we're trying to clear out our heart chakra, right? We're trying to do heart chakra work. Your mantra for the heart chakra is going to be YAM, Y-A-M. YAM is the mantra for the heart chakra. So with the mudra, which is your hand gestures or your hand placement, this is going to help you activate the energy of the heart chakra. You're going to say your mantra. So Normally, people have beads and different things or a timer um, if you want to be technical about it. But you know what? I would close my eyes and do this mantra and mudra until I feel at peace, until I feel those blockages move, until I'm no longer thinking about what I was thinking about before and I'm open and clear. I feel like there's no more boundaries or blockages in my heart chakra. So as I'm sitting crisscross applesauce in a quiet, comfortable space with no distractions, my mudra over my heart and the other mudra resting on my knee, I'm going to recite, yum, yum. Yum. Okay, I did an example of that three times. I hope it wasn't too loud in your ear, but I did an example of that three times so you can know how it sounds. But also, if you were able to hear the lingering at the end, you would kind of understand how it feels. When you do the yum sound for the heart chakra, there is a certain type of vibration that goes through your body. So I know initially it might be hard for you to do, but I definitely will say to put it in regular practice and mantras for the heart chakra will become something that you can do on a regular basis. What you are also able to do if you do not want to sit crisscross applesauce and you do not want to do the mudras is you can still do the yam mantra, but lay down. While you're laying down, you can have Palo Santo burning and you can also utilize gemstones to put on your heart center, meaning put a crystal right in the center of your chest as you are doing your heart chakra mantra. So that would look like instead of sitting crisscross applesauce, laying down in a comfortable space, Your crystals are clear and charged, ready to rock, and you put one normally. I like to put one on my third eye to make sure that I am clear every time I am doing my mantras, and then one on your heart. And then you would do your yam mantra as you are laying there to magnify your meditations or just carry around with you all the time. But these are the ones that are easily accessible and not a problem for you to get if you go to your local crystal store. And let me give you this smooth hack though. But the only reason why I never told you guys this before is because if you're not very careful or you don't know how to work with crystals as of yet, this thing that I'm about to tell you now might hinder you more than help you. But any crystal that you want to get, if you have a clear quartz, you are able to charge a clear quartz, which is a clear crystal. It's called a clear quartz. You are able to charge a clear quartz into any gemstone that you want with intention, right? So just say, for instance, if I didn't have a rose quartz, I wasn't able out to go out and get a rose quartz, but I got, got a clear quartz. I can hold my clear quartz and I can charge my clear quartz with rose quartz energy. So I can turn it into whatever gemstone that I want my clear quartz to be. However, if you are not as strong in your intentions and you don't keep steady energy or strong enough energy to program your clear quartz, 
then your clear quartz can take on energies of your environment, negative energies of yourself or other energies around it. So even though that is a hack, you would have to be very confident and intentful and spiritually connected when charging your clear quartz crystal because they are chargeable, rechargeable, reprogrammable, the most reprogrammable gemstones out of the bunch. So as we've talked about the different levels of meditation, let's go into other facets that you can use. Help work through any blockages in your heart chakra. Due to the fact that love is related to the air element, it is also important to do breath work. A lot of times we take breath work for granted. We take breathing for granted. It's something that we do pretty much effortlessly with no thought. But to actually put thought into your breath as you are meditating is very, very important. There are different forms of breathing that can assist you in using your air and the breath in your body to alleviate blockages and clear out old stagnant energy. One of those ways is to first center yourself. This form of breath work is to sit down comfortably or crisscross applesauce. Breathe in as deeply as possible. Once you have breathed in as deeply as possible, you're going to exhale. But when you exhale, you will exhale through your nose with your mouth closed. So in turn, that breath is done through your nose, back out of your nose. Once you are able to do this, and you are able to center yourself, then you are ready to move on to the next form of breathing. The next form of breathing is my favorite because it is utilized to release old stagnant energy. With this form of breath, you will breathe in through your nose and push out all the air through your mouth. So in turn, you will be breathing in your nose, and then pushing out your mouth. <sighs> now you're going to take very, very deep breaths in, collecting and searching and finding all the blockages, all the issues, all the heavy burdens, anything that you may feel in your body, your emotions, and your chakra centers. And you're going to push them out of your mouth. So when you're breathing out, if you're not making noise, then you're not breathing in deep enough. You're not collecting enough. Now, if your breath is kind of shallow at first when doing these breathing exercises, this is good. And especially right now in this pandemic, it is very important that we are breathing up to lung capacity. So even if your breaths are shallow when you first start doing breath work, don't worry, they will get deeper and deeper as your lungs get healthier and healthier as you exercise these deep breaths. Last but not least in breathing. This is also another one of my favorite breath techniques because it helps you boost your energy. This breath technique is called fire breathing. In this particular technique, you breathe in as much air as you can through your nose and when you breathe out, you're breathing out short, rapid spurts, pushing the air out through your stomach and your diaphragm. So that would be like breathing in and then fire breath go. So as I'm breathing out, my lips are more like in a form of blowing a kiss and I am pressing the air out of my diaphragm that I collected on my deep breath in. Now, first you can start off slow, but as you go on, you're going to increase your speed, which is also increasing your prana or your energy. Once your energy is increased, you will feel a lot better and you will be able to utilize that energy in any form that you would like. I know that I have mentioned this before, but one of the things that I found that have helped me is doing affirmations, which is almost like a mantra, right? 
So you're going to wake up and intent your day and you're going to say things to yourself in the mirror. I am an open channel of love. I forgive myself and others. I am compassionate to myself. I show grace to myself and others. These are affirmations that you can say to yourself. You can look at yourself in the mirror and recite these affirmations and until they become a part of who you are on a regular basis. And last but not least, we cannot forget about that fuel, y'all, that food that we put in our bodies on a regular basis to live optimally. So the foods that are directly related with love are avocado, beans, broccoli, cucumbers, greens, peppers, lettuce, and okra. I hope this episode was able to help you gain some clarity on what love is gain some clarity on different variations of love and how they show up in your everyday lives. These levels of love that I discussed today can be used in combinations, right? We don't ever just use one variant of love. Most often, we use several forms of love all at the same time. So I hope y'all showing love all throughout the year and not allow one day to have y'all break the bank. Don't go to the gas station and get no bears and no colorful roses. I mean, if that's your thing and that's your tradition and that's what you want to do, then that's great. But make sure that you do that all throughout the year. What Method Man say, forget all that romance crap. You show your love. And that's straight up. I want to be showed love by the people that I'm around and my significant other and my loved ones all throughout the year. I don't want you to have to wait till one day to let me know that I am loved because tomorrow is not always promised. So I hope this episode was helpful for you. I'm going to drop a bonus episode on St. Valentine's and the real meaning and setup behind Valentine's Day. But if nothing else, Make sure you clear your heart chakra to make sure that you are able to exemplify the greatest form of love that there is, and that is agape. And as you are doing your work, never forget your mental health is.